when that happened along the way, but it just got cold and unemotional. And that's not the way we connect with people. Back to, I, I love Simon Sinek and start with why and connect with people on a deep level. And I think that's why I like in, immediately connected with you, mm -hmm. like values, soul-based, authentic, courageous person. Yeah. Thank Which you for that. You are. Um, speaking of courage, you brought up um, abuse mm -hmm. earlier. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I, I don't know much of that part of your life or, or you know, what your involvement is in that side. So. Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, so I did. I don't even know how to bring it up. <laughs> no, it's fine. And, you know, hey, you're in good company. Most people don't know yeah. how to bring it up. But um, so I became like a student of like research after it because I wanted to understand it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really grow up knowing anything about it. You know, they say that it perpetuates, right? Like mm -hmm. generation to generation. So some people grow up and they fall into those types of relationships. But I'd, I'd never been in one like that. So yeah. here I am with this man and he's doing things that are red flags. And now I know to call them red flags. Yeah. But at the time I was making excuses or being like, oh, okay, like he's having a bad day when he punches the wall <laughs> or when he kicks the trash can. Or I must – it was my fault – you know, that he threw the chair. Like, it must have been me. Yeah. Or when he's cursing at me, I'm like, well, what did I do? And maybe it's because I'm a fixer in terms of, like, my job is mm -hmm. to solve problems. Um, and I was never really searching for a man that needed fixing. It's just we – um, well, this is – my daughter knows. It's not a secret. But we got pregnant. So then we got married. Yeah. So it wasn't like we'd been friends for a long time or I didn't, like, know him all that well. And it was like, oh, okay. Now you're the father of my child, so yeah. I'm going to rationalize that this is all going to be okay, and maybe it's stress or lack of sleep or whatever. Anyways, um, and I learned with domestic violence that you know there's there's verbal and emotional, and that's always how it sort of starts, and then it it escalates through like isolation, lack of spending time with your friends and family because they start to not be supportive of those activities, and a lot of women actually stop working because they don't support that activity either. It's all about isolation and having yeah. them, having you all to themselves. And when our marriage wasn't going all that well, like we decided brilliantly to have another kid to fix it. Mm -hmm. yeah, of magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah. <laughs> the magic was it didn't fix anything, but we also moved to um, a bigger house up in LA and it was more isolated from um, the, uh, townhouse that I had had um, on the Marina del Rey Peninsula before mm -hmm. where our neighbors were all really close and here this was like a, a much more isolated environment and um, the yelling and like you know like erratic behavior was continuing and I was like okay I can tough it out and I remember saying to my mother one time like hey you know I can do this for 18 years and at the wow. time I was um, I had just had my son, Kevin, and I had put on a hundred pounds, which I was not me. I mean, I'm yeah. an exercise person. I played soccer in college. I've always been fit. Like I was miserable. Um, I just was, I, but I didn't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I was taking it out on myself sure. in a bad way, but not terrible. could have been worse, but anyways. Um, so I put the kids to bed and my son was about eight weeks old and I had just gone back to work from maternity leave on a Monday and it was a Monday night and he came, my husband at the time came home. The kids were in bed. I was in bed. He came home and um, he was upset about something and woke me and started yelling and it just escalated to the point that it became, you know, physical. Yeah. And I ended up calling the police and there was a, um, a really nice police woman who came and she was like, you know, has this happened before? And I said, no, this is the first time. That, and she goes, it will happen again. These things don't just happen once. Yeah. And I said, you know what? You're you're probably right, given the fact that I had seen sort of this like transition, this lead. Yeah, it was yeah. it was going that direction. I said, okay. So we filed a restraining order with the judge that night. Wow. Um, and he granted it. And I didn't see her speak to my husband for two years. We had our first court date on our two year wedding anniversary. Hmm. I wore white. I was like, all right, I'm like, uh, owning this. Yeah, there's no coming back from this. And, yeah. and he was, you know, <clears throat> trying to get messages through my attorney, like, you know, can I have a second chance with her? Or will she let me prove that I'm really sorry? And I was like, I'm, I'm glad to hear that he's sorry. And I'm, that's wonderful. But like, 
one and done. Like there was no coming back from it. And the average woman stays seven times. Wow. So I knew that that wasn't me. So um, the state of California prosecuted him uh, for criminal charges. The family court prosecuted him. And we have, it's not been six years since that has happened. And I honestly, if he ever hears this, I want him to know that I am so grateful. I, and someday I will thank him in person Mm -hmm. because if he hadn't done that, I would have stuck it out and I would have, I would have never found my strength. And I am a different person now because I went through that. And I am so grateful that that catalyst happened because the chain of events that happened after it were such a blessing Yeah. in terms of the life that we're able to provide for our kids and the way that we've been able to like right now we're at the point where the restraining order, um, I actually recently let it go Mm -hmm. and we take the kids to dinner about once a month together. He worked really hard to kind of grow up yeah. and he took it seriously and he did classes and he did community service and he has become an amazing father. And that's what really makes me happy is that he's there for our kids. He's involved. He's coaching their teams. He's active in their schools. Like he's really turned it around and, he doesn't have to be a great husband. He doesn't have to be anything with me. As long as he's good to the kids, I'm, I'm good. And, yeah. and he is. It's, it's really, it sounds like your strength in making that first step has made him a better person and obviously you a better and happier person too. Yeah. Not only for yourselves, but for your kids. Absolutely. And I think we both, you know, we know that divorce is always hard on kids and ours in particular. You know, someday we'll have to talk to them about it when they're older. But yeah. Um, but we want to always be open about it, and it was something we went through, but we're also going to have a lot of other experiences for our family to go through that are going to be good and positive, and maybe we can use this to help other people. Yeah. And after um, the incident, I, for a while I started a foundation called Beyond Domestic Violence mm-hmm. to help other survivors tell their story and uh, kind of regain their voice and strength. Um, I had met with a woman named Leslie Morgan Steiner who wrote the uh, best-selling book, uh, Crazy Love. And she was a great sense of inspiration to me. And I have since sort of passed the reins of that over because I realized that my, my skill set is not in the actual talking to people and in the, um, the therapy part of it. Mine's more in the, hey, I'd be better joining a board that's helping women through domestic violence, and I'll do the marketing material or your yeah. website or your social or something. Yeah. Like, it's not my gift, but um, but I do look for opportunities to, to give back and to support. And I have had women reach out and want to talk about it, and I'm happy to have that conversation courageously with anyone at any point in time. I'm definitely not ashamed of it. Um, the day after the incident happened, uh, it was in the LA Times. Wow. And because he was uh, coaching and teaching at a prestigious school, and um, I was shocked. I didn't know how it even got in the paper. Yeah. It was like, oh, oh, my God. That wasn't the intent. I don't even know. They never called me for a quote or anything. I don't know how it happened, but I was, like, almost relieved. I didn't have to have this conversation with everybody. Everyone knew. Yeah. They go- they, you they can still it. Google it. It's like, oh, okay. Wow. It was like a third-party credibility or something. I, it really made me feel better. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because, as you know, there's probably a lot of women out there suffering that don't know what to do about it. And hopefully through hearing this, they can take that step. I didn't realize there was a statistic on how many times women came back. And you said the number seven. Yeah, because it's um, it's very cyclical mm-hmm. with, like, things are really good and then they get really bad and then they get good again and then they get bad again. And um, I've sat with a bunch of women over the years that I've known and was surprised when they sat me down and said, uh, I need help. Yeah. I said, okay, here's resources. Here's people to talk to. Let me Let me put you on a path if you're ready. But they have to be ready. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, if you're listening to the show and, and you need to get a hold of Rachel, you're welcome to reach out to me. Most of you know how to get a hold of me, but you gave out your yeah. your statistics, you know, where we, we can reach you at. Um, let's let's change the tone a little bit because okay. I, I know you after that. Yes. And you're such an incredible person and full of life. Um, you just mentioned, too, coming in here, you were up in L.A. filming La La Land in La La Land. What is that? <laughs> is that a movie? What do you... <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, so Good Morning La La Land is the okay. nation's first streaming um, daily 
uh, morning show. It's on every day from nine to ten, and it's on it's on YouTube, Instagram, um, Facebook. It's on all the it's on all the streaming yeah places. They can find it. They can find it. Oh yeah, it's everywhere. And um, there's three hosts that are on there every day, and they've had people like today. I was on with the the drummer from Corn, mm-hmm. and he's put a, a whole philanthropic effort together to help people recover from. Um, what did I say? Uh, uh, addiction. Thank you. Yeah. And, <laughs> it's like, uh, 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 sounds like addiction. Sounds like, yeah. Um, but they've had all different types. Like they've had the Bachelorette on there, and they've had other business leaders and fashion designers. And it was really cool. So I was up there today talking about, um, you know, being a woman owner of an ad agency with four gentlemen mm-hmm. as my partners. Yeah. And they wanted to know a little bit about, you know, being a, a woman leader in this industry that has historically been male dominated. Um, I talked about um, one of my dear friends. Her name is Kat Gordon. And Kat Gordon realized a few years ago that only 3% of creative directors were women, which is terribly, terribly low. Yes, it seems low. very low. Yeah. So she started the 3% movement to raise awareness about women in the creative um, department and advertising and so once a year in New York, she does a big conference, and now she's also doing mini conferences around the world. And I've had the honor of going to a lot of these um, and speaking there and helping her mentor people. And it's been phenomenal to be a part of this, like, feminist movement to support creativity mm-hmm. in, uh, in business. Because when I was growing up, my parents, being as supportive as they are, and I'm the oldest of, you know, three sisters, I thought – the feminist movement was over. I was like, oh, we can do anything we want. Does it matter? Yeah. Well, delighted or not, the feminist movement is not over. It's a path that always needs to be forged and continually, like, you know, walked by all the women that are going through business these days because we're actually the first generation of women that are going to be able to be in positions of power to help others in in ex- um, astounding numbers. Yeah. So I think that we're making great strides, and I've actually um, had the honor of meeting Gloria Steinem mm. uh, last year, and she's I think she was 82, and she is so fiery. <laughs> Still. Still. Oh yeah, <clears throat> it was amazing. It was right after her recent book came out, and uh, it was inspiring. Well, you've been on my list of people to have on the show because, as I mentioned to you before. I'm just so encouraged by the strength of women these days, the things that they're doing, the positions that they're holding. We've had some other females on the show. Uh, Bricia Lopez is a James Beard Award-winning chef up in L.A. She's doing some incredible things in the Latina community. Wow. Um, and a number of other people. Leanne Jacobs last week, uh, she's all about living her life and, and making money and being healthy. Uh-huh. Um, so I really wanted to have you on the show to hear some of your story because uh-huh. I'm fascinated by it. And I hope that others can be encouraged by the story that you told about your life and where you've been. And There's one other thing that I want to say for anyone out there with a daughter. Yeah, I want to hear it because okay. I got two. Yeah. Henry's, got, yeah. <laughs> Henry's so, got two. All right, so you guys are going to love this. So Girls, Inc., are you guys familiar with Girls, Inc.? <clears throat> no. Okay, so it's a, it's a nonprofit organization. They have a chapter here in Orange County, but it's larger. And um, my favorite program that they do of all of them is called the Yes Program. And it's for girls 8 to 11, and they hold it here in Orange County at Chapman University, and Mm -hmm. it's a six-week program, and it's an entrepreneurial program. So this summer, my daughter Elizabeth went through the program, and at eight years old, she had to run for an office. They had to write a business plan with her team. They had to create a product. They made slime. Somebody else made, like, painted rocks. Somebody else made hair ties. And then at the... At the end, oh, and once a week they go to a different corporate headquarters, like Coca-Cola, BJ's Pizza, mm-hmm. Angel Stadium. And um, at the very end, they have this showcase selling event where all of the board members of Girls, Inc. and other business owners from Orange County come in and you you donate. And then they give you fake money and you shop all of the, oh, wow. at their town. And you buy their product, and they they negotiate and heckle with you on price. They have promotions. They have signage. They have advertising pieces, and then they vote on, you know, like the best business or the most successful business. And I got got to attend last year, and this year I was like, oh, my daughter has to do that. And she loved it. Wow. 
That sounds awesome. It was. It's a cool thing. I, that is not the kind of program they had when I was growing up. No, I was going to say, boys, you better watch out. The women are coming on strong. <laughs> yeah. I really believe that. I mean, there's so much talent out there in the workforce with female executives.